Great. Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob, and uh, we got a lot of stuff to go over. Let's just be honest. So if you're here, thanks for stopping by for the live stream. Obviously, I think you're uh, probably here because of uh, what exactly is going on with the bill. So we're going to go over all that as far as Senator Lummis, rhymes with hummus, and uh, what is actually going on with this legislation bill. And I will just tell you right now, to be upfront, don't get all worked up over it because uh, there's a reason to not be excited. So first of all, we'll take a little market recap. Then we'll talk about the actual bill and the guts of it and uh, talk about what the good and the positive is, especially for altcoins. I think that's what everybody's uh, really concerned about. Then we're going to talk about how we got here. And then we're going to go over the nuts and bolts and we'll do a little Q&A at the very end. So let's jump into it because time is precious. So first of all, first of all, let me ask you this. How is the audio? How is the... Uh, the the stream any kind of glitchiness because i'm using a new uh router i want to make sure that we're uh, doing okay so let me know about that in the comment section uh, as i roll through this quickly and uh we'll take a look at today so today's a good day i mean good day for legislation not really good for the market itself and uh, if you've been following the channel you know that i am uh, a little i have a little caution uh, going on right now, especially leading into the CPI numbers coming out on Friday and uh, the Fed Reserve and their meeting on the 14th and 15th of June. Uh, so I have paused my DCA uh, buying st uh, string uh, because I think that uh, there's a reason. There's a reason uh, for these little dips. And uh, right now, I mean, it is what it is. We're down almost 5%. Mark cap is 1.28 trillion. Bitcoin's down. Ethereum's down. Let's see what's up. Huh? Cardano's up. That's good. And uh, what? XRP, 0.9%. Watch out. And uh, everything, 6.2 for Chainlink. Great. Good job, Chainlink holders. That's me, myself. Tezos. I am one of those holders. I still have Tezos. I don't know why, but that's what's going on. So uh, that's not the greatest news, but I kind of felt like we would go in this pattern. There's a couple of reasons for why it actually dropped down, but we like to talk about this channel's correlation. And uh, I've always said that, hey, the market, traditional market, is correlated to crypto. And uh, today is proving me uh, otherwise. And we are not correlated, but not in the way we would like. S&P 500 is up. NASDAQ is also up. That's a bummer, but we've had some bad news, a string of bad news, especially with uh, the SEC and what they're doing. We'll get into that in a second. Also, like I said, the CPI numbers are coming out uh, on Friday. And personally, between us, I don't see how these numbers are going to improve whatsoever. This is directly from uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And we take a look at the last one. I mean, <clears throat> we were at 8.2, 8.3% increase. And you can just see right here, energy is the biggest one. Energy is the biggest factor right now for those CPI numbers. And everybody's feeling the crunch. I get, I get texts from friends all the time across the country saying, hey, have you seen the gas prices, seen the gas prices? This is a great website. It's called gasprices.aaa. And of course, you're in America, you're gonna, this will be something good for you. Uh, national average for gas price is almost five bucks. That's just the average. That's just the average. If we scroll down here and take a look, a um, year ago today, it was three bucks. And now it's five bucks and that's national. I wanna drill down into one state in particular, California. The current average is $6.37. That's the average. It's higher and it's lower. So when these numbers come out, I just do not see uh, how we could actually be going in a positive direction or in a positive way, but uh, that is just me. So that's what we have for the markets. We'll see how it all works out. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong and things go up and I'll you know, consider, continue the DCA, but we will see. So let's get into it. Here's the bill. Ta-da. Uh, this is the Senator Loomis, Lummis bill, and uh, it's pretty, it's not too long. It's only 69 pages and so, and, and we'll, we'll go over it in a second. But the reason why I say don't get too worked up, it's because of this. This is a good article from Yahoo Finance, and it really breaks it down, but this is the big thing I want everybody to be 100% aware of. Uh, the two senators that are rolling it out, uh, Lummis and Gildebrand, uh, it's one large bill it likely will get broken up and introduced as standalone bills, offering a better chance of getting sections through committee for passage. So what does that mean? That means that the things that we're gonna talk about, 
it's all academic and it's great. We can talk about it and say, well, this could happen. This could happen. But in all honesty, it's a step in the right direction. It looks very good. Even altcoins, I think we'll go over that, but don't expect too much too soon because the wheels of justice move slow and the house of Congress moves even slower. So to say all that, you might think, well, that's a bummer, Rob, but look, even uh, Charles Hoskinson here from uh, Cardano is uh, very hopeful about this, uh, this legislation. He said so in a nice little video around 13 minutes or so. I linked that in the description. You can see exactly what he says. And he, I echo the same sentiment. It's a step in the right direction. Things look good. It's much better than what it was. I think things, uh, not, not all things will get passed, but if we just get a fraction of them, I think it's where we should go. And then also... Uh, I linked this tweet in the description as well. If you have, and I like how she says this, this is Senator Lummis. She says, thank you for your patience. Finally gonna be able to get this out the door. Uh, getting this right will be hard, but worth it. And I think she's 100% correct. So give me some constructive feedback. I like how she says constructive feedback, not feedback, because let's be honest, uh, in crypto Twitter is a bunch of trolls. I love you trolls, but you got a lot of them. So when you're doing these things and we talk about this, Give a little feedback of what might actually help. So we have that. But the thing that I will talk about before we get into the, the meat and potatoes of this whole uh, bill, which I'm sure everybody on YouTube is talking about today, I'm sure. How do we get here? I think that's the bigger question. Well, why is this coming about now? Why now? Why is this happening? It's because of money. That's why. It's just, that's how it goes. I'm sorry to tell you. The, this is how the world works. And right now, crypto lobbyists, this is an article from Bloomberg, are outpacing um, big pharma and a bunch of other industries that usually were throwing a ton of money at senators and congressmen and women. And uh, now we have a very vocal, a very well-organized, and a very well-funded crypto lobbying group. And they are says right here, 5,200% of surge in U.S. giving. And I always wondered, I'm like, now this is between us. This mean 1,000 people or so. When I was always surprised when Ted Cruz from Texas came out and he was so like rah-rah on Bitcoin. I was like, this is great. But then I realized, I'm like, wait, how many Bitcoin miners moved to Texas after Russia? I mean, sorry, well, Russia and China, a big boatload. How much money is maybe being donated to his campaign, probably a boatload. And in all honesty, I don't know if uh, that's the step in the right direction, but it is what it is. And that's the reality of the situation. Also, uh, a little bit of um, blowback from the SEC is warranted because they're not too happy about this bill. And what do they do? Well, they want to investigate Binance. This was after a Reuters expose. Sounds very risque, but uh, this is what happened yesterday. SEC is investigating whether Binance Holdings broke securities laws when it launched its Binance token uh, in an ICO five years ago. I think there's a lot of other scams and problems that they could investigate into, but hey, start, at, start your way at the top, I guess. ICO took place in 2017, and this was the whole, I guess, the uh, impetus of, of what led to this. On May 6th, which was uh, yesterday, Reuters published a lengthy special report alleging that Binance processed at least almost two and a half billion of transactions from hacks, investment frauds, and narcotic sales between 2017 and 2021, and had a weak KYC and AML protections for those years. Reuters mentions the hacking of Eaterbase. I guess that's maybe it's Etherbase. Maybe it's Eaterbase, I'm not sure. With some of the proceeds being laundered through Binance by North Korea. Lazarus and Binance's association with Russia, Russian language drug mart Hydra. Drug mart. Okay. Binance spokesperson said this is woefully misinformed. Uh, they use outdated information from 2019. But keep in mind, the US CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, uh, did an investigation on the exchange's trading practices last year. And also in the UK, uh, Binance was ordered by the Financial Conduct Authority to cease activities in the country after review of its operations last year. So... I mean, look, it is what it is, and whether where there is smoke, there's fire, and uh, that is up for Binance to handle. But I can just tell you right now, <laughs> the way this law is written, 
I don't think the SEC is too happy, and we'll talk about that right now. So what I want to do is I want to bring in a uh, friend of the show, DJ Crypto from Buy the Dip, Sell the Tip. And uh, he's going to help us decipher exactly what the heck is going on with this bill because there's a lot of things. And uh, he's done a little bit of a deep dive. So two heads are better than one. So let me bring that gentleman on. DJ Crypto. Yo, yo, yo. Thanks for having Hello. me. Yes. Thanks for coming on. So you want to get into this? Absolutely. Let's get into the guts of it. So <clears throat> here's the bill. And I'm going to reference this and go back and forth. I read most of it, but it's kind of dry. Let's go over the, the cliff notes, shall we? Because people want to live their life. So here's what we got right here. Two senators, Lummis and Gildebrand, availed the proposal. So the first things first. In the bill, crypto exchanges and product offerings will have to disclose risk of losses, how assets are treated in the event of bankruptcy, while consumers are guaranteed the right to keep and control digital assets they own. First of all, DJ, step in the right direction, or do you think this is an oversight and that you're doing a little too much? I like this part. Um, <clears throat> I think this, a lot of things probably have some influence with the recent Luna debacle. Oh, yeah. But um, I think what they're trying to do is what they're set out to do of protection. You know, this is their form of a, a protective statement. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but disclosing things, that's what we want in crypto. That's what the blockchain is good for, is being able to see things. So anything that's transparent, I think, is a step in the right direction and disclosing the risk of loss. Yeah. Maybe that's good for the new investors and gets new people in there. I don't think people who have been in crypto for years care about it, but new ones probably need it. Yeah. You know what? I was just I was just about to pop off and say something that was not correct, but it made, it made me think about it. I was talking to a friend of the show, Jerry Hall, and uh, I was complaining about the SEC. I'm like, why can't they get their thing together, everything together, and actually start enforcing these? And Jerry's like, Rob, it's not the that's not the job for, for the SEC to write laws. They can enforce, but they can't write anything. They can, you know, uh, go before Congress and give their input and things like that. So, like what you just said, you know, you know talking about you know, this is, you know, in enforcement and this is trying to protect people. The SEC can talk about it. They can give their, their input, but they can't write anything. And this is where the rubber meets the road. So it does make a lot of sense. I know people are pretty ticked off at Gary Gensler. And I know he watched the show, Gary, thanks for stopping by. But in all honesty, it's their job to really, you know, not write the laws, just enforce the laws or whatever they're at. So makes sense. What do you think? I think overall, I'm, I'm looking at this, big picture of will this lead to mass adoption yes is is this what it takes or is this the step needed for mass adoption to happen because that's what we all want is for you know many more investors to come into the space does it make it easier does it make it safer does it make it more trustworthy um, and i think that section is part of that goal yeah to make it trust trustworthy because i mean Look, if you're here right now watching, you're a front runner and all the people that you got in, it's going to take them some time to, to catch up. Anyhow, but let's, uh, let's move on to the next part. The bill creates regulatory clarity for agencies charged with supervising digital asset markets, provides a strong tailored regulatory framework for stable coins and integrates digital assets into our existing tax laws. That was what Senator Lama said. And here's how they're going to do that. First, they got to say, and this is what I've always thought about. Give us a definition. Tell us what a commodity is. Tell us what a security is. Tell us what a currency is. And give those to each different divisions. CFTC for commodities, securities for the SEC, and currency for the OCC. That's great. Let's do that. So this bill is a clear distinction between digital assets that are securities and those that are commodities by looking at how the asset is used. And the big thing is utility, I, from what I, what I can gather. It's, is this... Are you resting on the laurels of the other company to create revenue for you and do nothing? Or are you using this as like a utility type of thing? That's, that's how I see it. How do you, how, how do you read the bill, DJ? Same thing or just a little bit different? On this one, it's, it's the key thing that sticks out to me is currencies is not mentioned. Yeah. It's either securities or a commodity. And so essentially in my mind, I'm watchful of any hope of currency being the future of cryptocurrency yeah. seems to be out of the door through this type of legislation. 
So it's going to be kind of put to side of something like a gold or something like that. Uh, and maybe that's fine, but it's just something to watch out for. Uh, it's going to be taxed differently. <clears throat> it's going to be traded differently. Uh, so there's just different rules, different oversight, like you just mentioned, because it's not going to be a currency. Yeah. So on top of that, under the legislation, most cryptos are, de this is great. Under the legislation, most cryptos are deemed commodities. Let me say that again. Under the legislation, most cryptos are deemed commodities and gives the CFTC clear authority over digital asset spot markets, noting that digital assets that meet the definition of commodity, and it does say here, including Bitcoin Ether, will be regulated by the CFTC. Smaller tokens like Cardano and Solana <laughs> would be considered ancillary assets and presumed to be a commodity unless the use of those tokens met exclusions that would kick them over to the SEC's purview as securities. And this is the big question everybody's asking. Well, if it states it like that, you know, what's the definition between commodities and securities? So DJ, did you, before we get into the, the actual and jump back into the laws, anything to add on this one? Uh, I, I tend to watch people more than I watch tech, for example. Mm -hmm. And so when I see this, it's like a backhanded compliment to things like Cardano and Solana, these little ones. I mean, they're enormous in size compared to corporations, but uh, mm -hmm. When you think of these little ones, where is that bar of how small is too small to be, you know, in the other category? If it's so small, does that mean anything not Bitcoin? That's what I believe they're trying to do. Or is it Bitcoin and Ethereum are protected? So when they start talking about the small ones, that, that perks me up a little bit of who are they mm -hmm. trying to protect and who are they trying to set aside? Because it yeah. wasn't always Bitcoin at this highest level. But now that it is, you know, a trillion dollar business or entity or whatever you want to call it um you know is that now the size that okay now they're big enough yeah i, I just the wording is weird to me well it's remember it is it is it is an op-ed piece so the real wording really comes out of this piece right here so mm -hmm. ancillary asset this is what we, we went around about so the ancillary asset means an intangible fungible asset that is offered sold otherwise provided to a person in connection with the purchase and sale of a security through an arrangement or scheme that constitutes an investment contract. That's, I think that's a bit of a big word, the investment contract, as that term is used in section blah, 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 blah. 19, Act of 19, the Securities Act of 1933. And this is where they're saying this is a security. The term ancillary asset does not include an asset that provides the holder of the asset with any of the following rights in a business entity. And this is the thing, a debt or equity interest in that entity. So think about your crypto right now, whatever your big thing is. If that's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tron, I don't know, Chainlink, Solana, Cardano, like they just mentioned, Avalanche, blah, 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 right? By you owning that crypto, does that give you an, an, an equity interest or a debt in that entity? Does it give you liquidation rights? With respect to that, can you liquidate? Can you do whatever you want with it, essentially? An entitlement to an interest or dividend payment from an entity. A profit or revenue share in that entity derived solely from the entrepreneurial or, entrepreneurial or managerial efforts of others or any other financial interest. So it's tough. It's, it's tough to, to look at that and go, okay, well, you know, they're talking about, I mean, if you really think about it, I mean, even some, some could argue, well, there's a part of that that could be Bitcoin. But in all honesty, um, this to me sounds like, if you think of it like a company, like we talked about DJ, mm -hmm. like as a company, stocks give you those rights to do those things. But if you own a piece of Cardano, Solana, Voyager, does that give you the right to do anything you want with a company? That's, that's the big question. What do you see here? Yeah. I don't know if this is like what we, what we perceive to be true, that there's a lack of understanding in Washington about crypto and digital assets. And that's why it comes out as this way. Yeah. But there is a common misconception that having tokens of a company or of an organization works as like a stock and it does not. Um, you know, maybe some of the governance aspects to it, you know, maybe come tricky. I saw some verbiage about DAOs and things like that. Um, yeah. But it just doesn't work that way. And it, it's almost to me, it makes me wonder if they just don't understand how a token or a coin would work. 
Well, that's, that's also, if, if Ethereum huh. is ruled a certain way, how does that affect everything that's built on it? All the ERC20 tokens, for example, are they a part of that system <laughs> and fall under that umbrella? So before we go on, here's the, here's that, that'll be the question for, for everybody here. Well, for us, uh, let's, let's play devil's advocate. Let's say they come down and say, okay, everything's a, everything's a security. Bitcoin's not a security. It's a commodity. Okay. But everything else is. So now everything's built on Ethereum and Ethereum down, which is like thousands of different projects. They're all a security. What is that? What happens then? Is it like, well, then, then the whole world collapses. No, it doesn't. So you guys probably buy a security every single day. The, if you own Robinhood, you do. Those are called equities. Those are called stocks. Didn't seem to, to bother them too much. And this is, this is why like, I take a look at these different, different platforms, like an FTX, like a Voyager, who are saying, hey, uh, we want to actually offer securities on our platform. That's what FTX is doing right now. They've rolled it out to a select few of American customers, and they're able to buy stocks on the FTX crypto platform. Voyager is also doing the same thing, trying to roll it off uh, later. So would that mean the end of, of crypto as we know it, DJ? Or that's not a bad thing? I, I definitely don't think it's the end. I think it just, I think it gives a nuisance or an irritant to the exchanges who yes. have to qualify in, in a certain way to be able to sell and offer these products. But I think there are some like who you're talking about, Voyager and FTX specifically, who have done the front work, probably expecting this to come and set up in case they, in case we get a ruling that we don't like in the crypto community, they yeah. seem to be well positioned for that. And will probably front run those uh, irritants of having to set it all up, whether it's legal work or fees or whatever it may be, yeah. get it out of the way, burn the bridges, and then you move on with clarity which that's what they all want is clarity. That's what, I mean, look, this is not a popular opinion, but I've said it on the show for quite some time. I think we do need a little clarity so people can get in here uh, because the big, see, we love the institutions when they buy up crypto, don't we? We love them, but then we despise them when they sell off, but you got to hit the good with the bad. And the only way that they're going to come in here in mass is a little regulation and safeguards. And that's just, that's just the truth. So Speaking that of, seems to be the only thing that combines everyone's efforts, whether it's a Bitcoin maximalist, whether it's a leader of an exchange, whether it's an investor into altcoins, all of yeah. them would pretty much get behind the idea. Just give us clarity so we can know what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Right just, now it's just speculation. I always say like this, tell me the rules so I can bend the rules. That's all. <laughs> right. That's all I want to know. All right. So then, so then we have that, but now we go into like, okay, so it's a little bit up in the air, but here is the transition rule. And this is where we're going to go from like, okay, well, let's just say that you are a security. Here's what happens. Uh, transition rule. This is on page 14. An issuer that does provide a security through an arrangement or scheme that constitutes an investment contract. Again, Securities Act 93. That provides the holder of the security with an ancillary asset before January 1st, 2023. Again, they come in and say, look, you're a security. Binance going you're a security. They shall be subject to the, and it's not like they're going to punish the buyers of these securities are going to punish the people that come in and they go, this is how we're going to do it. They're going to be subject to the periodic disclosure requirements under subsection C beginning in the first fiscal year of the issuer that begins on or after that date, blah, 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 blah. So really what it comes down to is this. Oh, you, you issued a security? First, they're probably going to fine them, which the same thing happened with, with EOS. EOS uh, raised like five, like, I know it was over $5 billion. And they got reprimanded by like with like a hundred million dollar uh slap on the wrist which if i'm gonna make five billion dollars go ahead take my hundred million i'm okay with that i'm all right but i think this is where we where people lose sight a little bit of it and go well the end is near and the sky is falling dj what do you think yeah i mean it's probably going to be something we don't like or the exchanges well, don't like yeah oh but yeah it's like the pay to play if you want to be in the game and be permitted <laughs> to operate Here's, here's your entry fee, so to speak, because the powers that be are going to be the powers that be. Uh, right. There is no overhaul yet. Uh, this is just an entry point. And, and, and until that overhaul comes, which is probably 10 years down the road, this is just a step in the direction and it's just part of it. We that's all right. have that throughout our lives of like, that's what you got to do to get what you want and you don't like it, but do it anyway. <laughs> that's what it feels like. It's that's exactly what it is. I mean, look, nobody wants re nobody really wants regulation, 
I mean, like really like just like, oh, I can't wait for regulation. But I think it's one of those necessary evils to say. And then, uh, DJ, going back to the the one point you made, which was pretty pretty good. You said that the people that are voting on these bills, like they don't really know what it is. And there was, let me, I've got a great, I played this a couple of times, but just listen to this. This is Sam Bankman fried uh, the CEO of FTX. And he was sitting before Congress just trying to really educate. And they were talking down to him like he was like a kid. And uh, this is what he said. Check, check this out. But I, I actually found something a little bit offensive that was said. I'm going to be pretty blunt. The tr most of the traders on our platform know a lot more about these contracts than many of the people in this room, including many of the people in this room who are condescendingly talking to them about what they do and don't know and should and shouldn't be offered. Anyway, I just had to get off that, that off my chest a, a little bit. And I think it's to some points about consumer choice here. I'm not saying that should be a sort of like be all and end all, but I think there is something to be said for it. And I, I, I think that, that there's some irony um, in, 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 in you know, some of, of the statements made by people attempting to protect those who know massively more than they do um, about the topic and who understand these products extremely well. Um, most of our users do. <laughs> he had enough, and, but he's right. I mean, how many, I mean, look, age is not a, an indicating factor of intelligence, right? But I know like the average age of like uh, of a senator is, <clears throat> I want to say it's between 68 and 71 years old. So to get them to know it, DJ, how do these guys, how do they get that knowledge base to, to kind of, you know, bring them to the right conclusion for these bills? It's all interns. It's not them. Yeah, they're, that's they're cool. reading documents yeah, and say, what, what do my constituents want to hear? What's going to get me some TV time? I mean, how does a senator from Wyoming get TV time? Pro Bitcoin. So right. although they may be passionately behind it and may warm up to it and they may like the idea, at the end of the day, we're still dealing with politicians. It didn't change overnight uh, just because it's a topic that we like to talk about. It's, it's hard to trust any of them. And uh, there's this, when we go to the next section, before I go into that, I, I was just thinking about how, you know, it's all about utility and, of course, the contract between two people and the revenue shared. You know, Ethereum, maybe they're the mad geniuses out there because what does everybody complain about with Ethereum? Gas fees. Yeah. And is that the utility? Is, That's that, the the, util is that the utility of Ethereum? Just say, hey, <laughs> it was, it's not like we're, the, the numbers go up. You need, get, you need Ethereum to pay those gas fees. So mm -hmm. there is utility, so we are not a a security maybe it's, maybe they're playing like three and four d chess against us i don't know so yeah, I, mean, I mean it makes makes sense you know I've, I've seen a lot of comments about the layer ones being attacked by this bill mm -hmm. it seems like everybody's worried about it but <clears throat> i haven't seen vitalik uh comment about it yet uh, of course you had you know hoskinson made his comments about it and we're seeing some kind of trickle out there but i haven't seen I'd be interested to see once he tweets about it and makes comments. He's he's usually pretty well thought out in his responses, but we haven't heard from him yet either. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll the see intricacies of that and how he sees his project moving forward with it. Yeah, exactly. And as a reminder, everybody, the uh, the video with uh, Charles Hoskinson is linked in the description. You can see what uh, his thoughts are. But then to finish this up, if we're going to talk about the education process of the senators and congressmen and women there in this bill, again, as parts of it go through, there's going to be some, some metrics and some stepping stones. One of this is not later than 270 days after the date of enactment of this act, the commission shall adopt final guidance permitting for the purpose of section, blah, 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 a broker or a dealer to perform within the same legal entity, both trading and custodial activities, relating to fully paid and excess margin digital assets, including virtual currencies and digital assets or securities, and others permitted by the commission to be within the control of a broker or dealer. So that kind of clears up, you know, what is as far as like the broker and the dealer. But then there was this piece down here, 20 and 21. Whoops. Oh, sorry, page 64. Let me go all the way down. I don't think everybody wants me to read the whole thing. But as far as like getting things to like people to actually get their job done, it comes down to this. No later than one year after the date of enactment, 
the Secretary of the Treasury in consultation with the CFTC, SEC, and private sector developers, participants in decentralized protocols, digital assets, and digital assets exchange shall analyze the market, submit to the Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs, and the Committee on Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry, uh, a report on the current developments of the use of DeFi, opportunities, benefits, and challenges related to DeFi protocols, a comparison of operational friction fees, transparency, cybersecurity, and resiliency, ensuring the accuracy of information regarding the underlying smart contracts of a DeFi protocol. So really what it comes down to is this. If this goes into play, you guys are going to have to do your homework, which DJ, you said it perfectly. It's not going to be them. It's going to be the pages and the people that are you know, helping them out. But there's going to be a massive, I think, education undertaking. And it's either they're going to do it now or do it later. What do you think? Yeah, I, th I think it just gets started. I think it's just a small bowl, ball rolling down the hill just to get momentum. The positive is we need the clarity to move forward. You need security and clarity for the mass adoption to happen. It's got to be made easy, got to be made simple, accessible. Um, the, the only other things that I think <clears throat> are left out of the discussion so far is the taxes, because when Congress makes a bill, it's going to be for them to get money. Yeah. Uh, and so looking to see where is the money coming from out of this that they want, uh, that's going to be their reason to give this time and attention. Um, I think some of that may change from what it is now. You know, if we get this into a commodity, I believe that to be beneficial for taxes here in the United States, um, as opposed to a security you know, do we get to keep things like the wash trading in place? Um, yeah. Because that seems to be a non-issue anymore as far as Congress talking about it. And then XRP, that's the big one who's been fighting this battle for so long, year and a right. half, two years, whatever it is. How does this impact that token and what are they saying about it who have been fighting that battle? I will tell you, if, if, if you love or hate XRP or Ripple, you should be rooting for them big time, especially right now. Because if they come out and they say it is not a security, then and they can prove that it is a utility, which I think it is a utility. It works out pretty well if you're doing, doing you're going to do cross border payments and uh, on demand or ODL on demand liquidity. I mean, that would be a slam dunk for a lot of other cryptos to go. No, 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 we're not securities. We're just commodities. And then, of course, the different exchanges can say we'll list them, and there's no no more problems. That's that's how I see it. Now. What do you think? Yeah, I think it kind of rallies behind you know, the altcoin community, if there's a, a difference in Bitcoin only and altcoins, I know there's a lot of hybrids as most of us yeah. are, but if there's an altcoin thing to cheer for right now, if you don't want it to be a security, it would be for that XRP case. And does this legislation affect that somehow? Do they just get a big fine because previously they operated as one, but now they're right. not? You know, how does this actually impact that case and that ruling? And they... Are they just the example going forward and, okay, they paid the price for everybody else. We need to thank them if they did. Yeah. And I think that goes back to that one section where it says uh, by, I think it was January, 2023, if you are deemed a security, then you have to go and you have to put all your paperwork in and there's, there's exclusions and there's going to be oversight and blah, 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 which that makes sense. I mean, like if you, cause they never gave anybody clear clarity, let's be honest. And well, Gary did Gary, you know, you did but only behind closed doors. Yeah. So nobody, nobody could ever know like, Hey, come on in and talk to us like uh, Coinbase did. And they did their, you know, they did, they were good boys and girls. They went there and talked to uh, Mr. Ginsler and Ginsler said, thanks suckers. And uh, we're going to stop you from that, that earn program, especially <laughs> in the United States. So yeah, that's not the, the way to play it. It's like, but, you, you know, the movie Braveheart. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's like the scene in Braveheart where they're like, Hey, bring all the, all the nobles in and then they just kill them all. That's, that's <laughs> very good right there. That's actually, that's actually a, a perfect way to look at it. Oh, and then also let's to, to finish up this, this section, I think there's gonna be some positives here. Um, they actually pulled in the, and they talked about how the bill codifies existing precedents under the Howey test, which was created in 1933. So I don't know how that can actually possibly look toward digital assets, but sure. And they said, hey, we're going to upgrade this. There was some pushback. The SEC pushed back on the initial bill proposal. And the senator's office uh, redefined the definition. And then it sounds like they got a little bit of the approval. And then they put out this bill. So at least there's that part. And then also, the bill doesn't require that all stablecoin issuers become banks, which would have been a disaster to be overseen by banking regulations. But it requires, this is what everybody knows, 100% reserve, asset type, and detailed disclosure requirements 
for all stablecoin issuers to guarantee that the stablecoin can redeem said stablecoin in exchange for the equivalent dollar value at any time. DJ, what do you think about this one? I love it. I yeah. love it because you need the security of the stable coins. And we saw that, right? I mean, it was pretty awful. Right. Now this one was, I mean, if you haven't heard, capital gains of up to $200 from cryptos will be exempt from taxes, which means you can go buy your coffee with Bitcoin if that's your thing and don't have to worry about, oh, I just got $16 in taxes, whatever else. But they were, what was interesting though, they were trying for a $600 threshold, which would be pretty awesome if they didn't do it. Here's the confusing part, DAOs. Decentralized autonomous organizations will be recognized as business entities under the tax code. <clears throat> a DAO would have to be incorporated or organized under the laws of a jurisdiction as a decentralized autonomous organization, which may include an LLC, corporation, partnership, foundation, cooperative, or similar, like a C Corp, S Corp, single member LLC, or so on and so forth. Do you see this, this working out, DJ, or that doesn't, what do you I think? I don't see that lasting because it's not decentralized if you make it an LLC. Yeah. So like, I mean, wouldn't somebody be over that? So that's just it. Like, like S corps and C corps, they're, they're seen like Apple, you know, as a corporation, they're seen as a, as a single, as a single entity under, under the, the laws and regulations of the United States. So if they look at it like that, and of course they have their board and they have governance. So when I was looking at this, I'm like, it, it, it won't make sense. But if you could say, okay, we have to file paperwork and there's some kind of governance in there, then of course, I don't know how that would work out. Unless you'd say, okay, we're having, here's the agenda put forward. Here's the governance. Everybody has to vote on. We need to put this paperwork in. We need to hire these people to do it. And then there's a fund or a smart contract that pays lawyers. I don't, I'm not for sure. Maybe they have to do it so that they can prosecute maybe because- if they don't give that protection, then a DAO could technically exist, raise funds separate from any governance, and really take advantage of people. Uh, similarly, similarly, like what we would call a scam token or something like that. Yeah. They could essentially do the same thing and have no regulation or oversight just because well, they call themselves decentralized. Right. So for, for, like, for like my business, like I've got one, like any LLC, you have to, you know, you register with the state. And uh, you also have to put in uh, as one person for your point of contact. I've got the, the, the legal term. Somebody help me in the comments. But that person that you designate, you have to give the address, the location of that person, whether it be in your corporate office or whatever else. And that's the person where they send the subpoenas, essentially, or if there's a problem. So I think that's the issue there. Now, there's, that will no way, there's not a snowball's chance in hell that's going to happen uh, with a DAO to go, there's just one person, just go find them. That's not gonna, it's not going to fly. But I, I see what you mean. Now it makes sense. Like we want to see who who do we have to sue? Where do we send the paperwork? Gotcha. And then uh, da, 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 da. legislation knows the definition of what constitutes a crypto broker. We talked about that uh, because before uh, miners and validators would be considered brokers. And of course, if that was the case, then they'd have to get all the information of of everybody that's in their network. So like me as a as a pool operator, mm -hmm. what that would be is that I'd have to collect all the information for everybody who's in my uh, Cardano pool. That ain't happening. Yeah, so, that blew up in their face. Yeah, that was, but, that's, but that's like what you said. It's about education. If they knew what it was, they'd be like, that's not going to work. But that, it wastes everybody's time. And, oh, yeah, the bill directs different studies, including commissioning the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to analyze and report on crypto's energy consumption. <laughs> DJ, what do you think? That's a typical bill right there. <laughs> Yeah. Some committee, some group gets paid to be in charge of something. <laughs> um, I mean, there's open reports on all of this already, but you got to have a committee and we've got to pay these people to do it. Your tax Even dollars at work. Just Google the information. Yeah. Tax dollars at work, man. And then to finish <clears> up, all of a sudden, and then this is what I said before it, this bill will likely get broken up, offering a better chance of getting sections through committees for passage. So, Again, it sounds awesome until you dig into it. I mean, the guts of the bill is a, is a vastly superior than anything we've seen before. But to get it actually passed, that's a different story. And that's it for the guts of it. DJ, anything else you want to add on this one? Hopefully it truly is bipartisan. I think that would be a good sign uh, just for us to see on some issue being bipartisan. 
And hopefully it does set the groundwork for clarity because that's what the whole industry needs to move forward. Yeah, I got to agree on that one. All right, so that concludes the part of the news. We went a little bit longer. Uh, usually we try to hit a 20